There it is, our first knee brace. Let's back up a little bit. What do you think? Let's go see if it fits. Oh, the moment of truth. Well, we know it's gonna fit, don't we? Look at that, isn't that nice? All right, so we'll clamp this into place, and now we need to lock this in here so it doesn't move, and lay out, transfer these measurements, and lay out and notch the mortises in the sill and the corner post. All right, here's the critical part. So what we've got to do is that this knee joint and the tendon on the back side is actually going to be let in to this corner post. All right, so we're gonna to have to take these marks very carefully at the very corners where this goes in here and where this goes in bring them up one inch and then chisel out in here three inches deep an inch and a half mortise. Same over here. We'll do the exact same thing on this side. So I've got my marks transferred and I'll break this whole uh, bent down and we'll, we'll just do it. This here kind of demonstrates why it's so important when you're laying out your timbers to kind of look and see how they're going to lay out. Not working from plans, I'm at a bit of a disadvantage making it up as I go, but in a perfect world, and you know, we just dodged a bullet there right there. The problem is this knot right here. Chiseling in knots is a nightmare, uh, you, and you'd want to avoid it if all possible. This actually, this mortise is going to be just underneath of that, but it could have easily landed on that knot had that been over here a little bit. So that's just something to look forward or look to. Same thing with your knee braces. Anything where you're going to be doing chiseling work, like this had a big knot on the end, no good. You know, if it's got one here in the middle or something, no problem, but we've got nice, clear, straight-grained wood, which is a delight to work with, and it's gonna be very predictable. So as I mentioned, it's critical that all of this is really square when we're laying out these knee braces. So what I do is I use these ratchet straps and then some framing material here to hold everything exactly square and immovable while I'm doing my layout. All right, it's do or die now. So here is the mortise laid out on the corner posts. So you can see the knee brace that we just made is gonna lay in like this. And this, is, this mortise is going to slip down inside, it's called letting it in right to this post right here. And then this shoulder will come in and seal up nicely against the post. And that will hide that cut. It's really an elegant design and this right here you can see this will be chiseled down 90 degrees right here and this will have to be chiseled down at a 45 degree so I I always give myself visual keys and and write 45 and 90 on there so I don't make mistakes because it's so easy, easy to do those old timber framers were pretty smart huh the way they figured all this stuff out and the tools that they use your regular framing square that all of us have that we still use today it was designed for timber framing that's why it's two inches on this side and an inch and a half on this side so it could, because the typical mortise and tenons all the joints were laid out either half inch and a half or two inch so by I used it right here just like they would have in the old days as I laid this out I used this as inch and a half to measure out my inch and a half tenon in addition to that you can use your timber framing chisels same thing you know I can that's why these chisels are the width that they are. Now I can lay this on here, and this is, will be a perfect fit for that mortise. What seems to be best with this critical layout is take your razor knife and put it where you want it to be, right in the center, center of that pencil line, and then move your square into it and then until it touches, and then you can run right down that. You know, I, might, I should preface this these videos of the techniques and such that I'm showing you are not necessarily the best. I learned, I, I'm self-taught, I learned how to do this from two library books and there are a lot of, there, I know there are a lot of you that have a lot more experience and may know better ways to do this so please, whoops, I should clamp that down, please feel free to make any corrections or add any tidbits of 
information in the comments that you might notice. Okay, let's chisel it out. With that line scored there with the razor knife, it's perfect. We can just lay our chisel right in that cut and start to, this is the critical part. You know, we need to make sure that this is straight. And, and with your chisel, it's almost impossible to do this just following a line, but with that, by putting it in the cut, in the cambium, you can do a nice straight line. Just nice moderate strokes, just to break this membrane so we don't tear out when we start really getting after it with the chisel. To hog out our mortise, we can save a ton of time using an inch and a half bit. I've got this laid out. The mortise, excuse me, the tendon's inch and a half. The mortise is just a hair wider, so it'll fit in there. So this is an inch and a half. So if we put a line right down the center and score it, that way we can put our drill bit right on that line and know that we're going to be exactly in between our lines because we don't have hardly any room to spare. See that? See how we're cutting just inside of our line there? That's why we, we've we scored that so as this bit comes in there it doesn't tear this out. We get a dirty hole there so we'll carefully drill these three inches deep. There you go. You can see how much time that saves. You better have a good drill bit and you better have a powerful drill because that's a deep hole, three and a quarter inches deep. And you can see because we scored that line, took a little time, we didn't get any tear out. That's, uh, that's the way you want to do it right there. I didn't do this one because this one's got to go in at a 45. It's like that. So, one thing I forgot to mention, the mortise needs to be deeper than the tenon. The mortise is the female portion, the tenon is the male, and as it goes in, as the wood shrinks, if it's the same depth, it will push out and it will shear the wooden pegs. It'll shear the pin and, and destroy the integrity of it. So you want that to be a quarter inch deeper. So I've got my combination square and set it three and a quarter, and I'm just fine. I won't have any problems. So now we can chisel this out and fit our uh, knee brace. So I just finished up the mortise and I'm getting ready to see if it's going to fit. You know, it wasn't that bad, uh, well we'll see how it fits, but I, the hardest part, or not the hardest part, but something you want to watch is this, this you got to do this 45 in there and you kind of have to do it by eye, so the combination square works really good for that because it has that, that 45 angle on it. I wonder if this wasn't designed for something like this, I'll bet it was, these things have been around forever. So I just laid this in here and then we'd run that back uh, to this point here and then I have it right there you can see it's just well maybe you can't see let me turn it for you you have I got a bunch of stuff sitting on here you have see how that rides down there perfect 45 and then I'm over a little bit over my uh, three inches so let's stick that uh, let's stick it in here and see if it's gonna fit Nice, huh? Man, that's gonna look cool. Man, that is nice. Isn't that beautiful? So this one here, you know, this will lay down, will go into that corner. And now you can kind of see why I, I did it this way uh, with that shoulder on there. See, this, this part of the tendon goes three deep into the wood. So this is, you know, this is way down inside here like this. But we've got this shoulder on there. And what that shoulder does is as the wood moves and shrinks and that pocket, you know, will open up, it hides that. It's kind of a, it's like, it's like a tr 19th century, 18th century trim board. You can see it's let in right there in the corner. Nice, decent, good, decent fit right there. And then there'll be a nice, prominent, one inch round wooden uh, oak peg right there. And all that will be exposed. This is the inside. This would be the outside. So I came in one inch, and there's two inches. 
and then four inches remaining from the mortise there. That's kind of the traditional way, the best, that's the way it's said in the book anyway. And so we were, we're, we're moving along. Only eight more to go. Here's a perspective with it kind of oriented the way it'll go in. You can see right there, 16 inches down to the corners. So when that comes tight, and then this, of course, this tenon right there will be led into the sill joint. And that is going to be nice, strong, like a ship. Just like a ship. I love the author Patrick O'Brien, who has written, he's passed away now, but he wrote uh, the Master and Commander series of the historical novels. Excellent, excellent books. Those are great books if you're going to be traveling and want to kill time. There's great historical fiction. How I would love to go to England someday and to get to tour the HMS Victory, Lord Nelson's famous ship from the Battle of Trafalgar. Was it Trafalgar? Yeah. Or was he, is his statue in Trafalgar Square? I can't remember. So, any of you Brits uh, have any pull with the royal family? Please uh, put a bug in their ear that um, we would uh, appreciate them bringing us over for a state visit. We'll be waiting for that invitation. Yes, it would be fun to go to England, wouldn't it? Because here in the States, it's almost impossible to find a proper chippy. And, well, I have the video for you right here. <laughs> Wrangler Star Gold. Also, if you, uh, anyone knows Benjamin Netanyahu, you might drop a note to him, too, that we would like to come to Israel. Um, so we'll uh, be expecting both of those invitations. Click the thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Uh, it helps uh, show support for the channel. We appreciate it. And as I started over here, I've put what I call Wrangler Star Gold for you new subscribers. Old videos, bringing them back around. Some of my favorites. So those are there for your viewing pleasure. So I'm heading back out into the shop uh, to uh, video and hopefully get uploaded very soon. Timber Framing 22. 22. The good stuff's coming. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.